So welcome back to more Fight Night Champion where I'm going to be taking on Lucius Palmer. And um, what Lucius Palmer likes to do is he likes to uh, play it safe for the first two minutes and then go after you for the last minute and then win the round and win the decision that way. And uh, right here it says don't let Palmer waste time. So really what I'm trying to do here is just wear him down slowly. And that involves a... Uh, a lot of combinations, a lot of body punching early on, which is the way I normally fight. Um, I usually like to do a lot of uh, low-high combinations or high-low combinations against this guy. And um, don't be surprised if you don't knock this guy out because uh, he can be pretty tricky. And um, really all it is is that what he's banking on is that he's trying to make sure that you punch yourself out for the first two minutes and then he'll go after you the last minute and try and win the round that way and um yeah there's a lot of dead action here so there is going to be some jumping ahead to certain points and uh really i'm just trying to do the same thing here just um go with some body combinations and then some occasional high low combinations i just find that to be the best way to deal with them and um, as you can see, I do, or I have gotten some damage on him. And just like that, I end up dropping him. And yeah, I didn't end up using the jab that much in this fight. And, uh, you know, I end up doing that a lot more in the next part. I mean, I just wanted to get these uh, early fights over with quickly. And, um, yeah, I mean, that's pretty much all there is to this fight. I mean, it's a little different than most other fights and it's a uh, he's not the kind of guy where you can just stand in front of him and just slug it out I mean he's not gonna hit back most of the time but his defense is pretty sharp so that is something you do have to be aware of there is some extra commentary from Joe and Teddy that you can get uh, different hints depending on what you do and what the other guy does you can also eavesdrop on his hints or whatever the trainer tells him to do between rounds and um yeah start of the second round I'm just pretty much doing the same thing and um yeah just trying to wear him down some more and really that's all there is to this first fight is you just try and wear him down and eventually take him out and um it is pretty easy to lose the decision here if you're not careful because you can be trying to slug it out and then he'll uh end up blocking those and then he'll end up landing more than you and then end up winning the decision that way so uh never actually had it happen to me but it can be done and I am, since I am playing on pro, it's uh, not going to be that tough. I mean, I have beaten this on champion before, and I don't really find it to be that big a difference. The uh, only real difference I see is that people defend a little bit better. But time to finish him off here. And yeah, I was kind of swinging a lot during then because I uh, kind of knew I had him hurt and um, just wanted to finish him off that way. So that is it for the debut of Andre Bishop, or the pro debut. And, um, let's see, there's going to be another cutscene coming up. And the load times in this game aren't great, so I did cut some of them. Back here in the Friday Night Fight Studios, I'm Brian Kenny. Amateur gold medalist Andre Bishop taking his first steps as a pro this past weekend on the undercard at the Aragon Ballroom in Chicago. Bishop beating former welterweight contender Lucius Palmer en route to his first pro win. Now we've seen Palmer before here on ESPN. He's a veteran, he's no joke, and Bishop is now considered to be one of the best prospects boxing has seen in decades. By beating a fighter the caliber of Palmer in his pro debut no less, he definitely made a statement. Andre Bishop clearly a fighter to watch. In other news, heavyweight prospect Isaac Frost scoring the second knockout of his pro career, beating another overmatched opponent on the undercard of a McQueen pay-per-view in Las Vegas. He's now 2-0 with two KOs. So now time for a uh, interactive training session where uh, pretty much is the same thing as a heavy bag combo drill in uh, legacy mode. And uh, basically all you're getting is just a bunch of commands that you have to do. And um, you can weave and then you can throw different punches and um, I am using the uh, buttons here instead of uh, the control stick and I just find it to be easier to just get them right 
And uh, the biggest problem I have with the control stick is that sometimes it ends up doing a punch I don't intend it to. And um, as you can see, I'm not getting the combinations right, and I've actually never been good at this game in Legacy mode. I came close to getting champion rank a few times, but really I'm not that good at this game, so I just don't play it. All the talk is done. Now the fight is set to begin. There's Andre Bishop in the locker room, Teddy, with his longtime trainer, Gus Carisi. Of course, Gus was one who very early on tapped Andre Bishop as a fighter to watch. He said he was full of potential. Yes, he was a tremendous amateur. He won the World Championship Tournament. From the State Palace Theater here in New Orleans, we welcome you to our middleweight main event. A much-anticipated bout between Andre Bishop and Mike Walker. So here's the uh, second fight. This is going to be against Mike Walker. He's a lot more aggressive than Palmer was. He is going to come after you, and this is a guy you can slug it out and uh, expect to win. And um, it also does give you an opportunity to practice dodging punches and doing that. And... Um, yeah, that is one of my favorite things is to uh, dodge and counter. I mean, that's just one thing I'm good at in this game, and that's one thing I use frequently. And, um, yeah, it does give you a chance to practice your defense against this guy. I mean, there's, like, no penalty unless you uh, get stunned or something. You can see I didn't do a very good job blocking his jab. And, um... Let's see, what Gus was saying in the uh, interactive training was that uh, he doesn't really believe in spoon-feeding his opponents, or spoon-feeding his fighters' opponents, and um, that's kind of how it goes in uh, pro boxing, is that usually, like, the first ten fights are hand-picked prospective losers, so to say, and basically all their job is to do is to make the other guy they're trying to promote look good by uh, getting knocked out. And uh, Gus is an old school guy, so he thinks differently. He just believes in challenging his fighters, and he believes in uh, that's like giving them a test. And as you can see, Walker is very aggressive here. And I end up getting that same counter. And with these fights, you are required to uh, knock the guy down at least twice and win the decision or uh, knock him out. I mean, either one, it works. Or either way, it works. And he somehow ends up getting up. So then I think I got one more round here. And, um, yeah, like I was saying earlier, normally how it goes is that they uh, puff up the fighter's record, so to say. But, um, like I said earlier, Gus is different. He believes in actually challenging fighters. And, um, yeah, that's pretty much it. I mean... Usually it's like first 20 fights and then a step up fight, but in this case, Bishop's getting thrown into the deep end and he is swimming pretty well. So what I'm trying to do is just finish him off with uh, some combinations. And unfortunately, I'm um, not really getting any good ones off. So I just decided to hit the body some more and then uh, go body head and just uh, go with a balanced attack. And that is uh, what happens when you punch too much in a short time. You end up guessing yourself and uh, when that happens, you end up getting hurt a lot more. You're a lot slower. And uh, your health drains a lot faster. So do yourself a favor and don't guess yourself. Because whenever that happens, that's when you end up running into trouble. Yeah, I just wanted to show that part off. But uh, this fight should be over soon. And, um... I don't know, that's really it for this first one. I mean, these uh, first three fights are pretty simple. And then uh, things don't really start getting interesting until afterwards. Man, that should be the last one. Now with that, Walker cannot beat the count, and Bishop is now 2-0. I was on my 
that way. And baby brother was making his mark as an amateur. Gus had been our father's trainer. He All took right. us in after our parents died. Good. Keep that champ going. So after some brief backstory, we get back to our third fight. And, um... Well, when they said Gus was more of a father figure for Andre, they weren't kidding. And, uh, they do talk some about his family, but not really that much. I mean, it was just mentioned, that was all. Anyway, this guy's gonna be Wilfred Rosario. He is pretty aggressive, but he's also pretty easy to knock out. And, uh, as you can see, I end up getting the jump on him pretty quickly. So I should probably mention how uh, well done the voice acting is in this game. And uh, they do get Joe Tessitore and Teddy Atlas, the ESPN guys, to uh, do commentary. And I do like them a lot as a team, even uh, watching them on TV and all. And, um, yeah, pretty much what I'm trying to do with Rosario is just finish him off as fast as I can. And then somehow that ended up working. And I didn't really care much for getting hit, but that's actually going to change in the next fight. So with all that, I will see you in part three next week. I kept winning fights. I got people's attention. My father told me to find out what it'll take to make you change your mind about working with us. It's easy. Yeah? Yeah. All you gotta do is change Gus's mind. What's that all? <laughs> you don't have a say in this? Sure I do. I say Gus is my manager. Then I guess I'm gonna have to change Gus's mind. Good luck with that. Thanks. Oh, by the way, I was by Keyshawn Hayes' camp the other day. His trainer thinks you're a sucker for the left hook. Keyshawn says he's dropping you with it. Yeah? Well, Keyshawn Hayes is entitled to his own opinion, isn't he? <laughs>